This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelley Johnson. This is Lady of the Blues from our guest, Miss Freddie. Uptown, independent and free. You say you paid your due. Stirring deep inside of me. Your cold heart makes me blue. That's some great music. Today we're speaking with a lady of the blues who's been keeping the blues alive and well in her hometown of Pittsburgh. Miss Freddie totally rocks the blues with an iconic voice and timbre. She's a multi-award winner, taking home the Iron City Rocks Award for the Best Blues Band in 2016, 2017, and 2019. Her CD, Lady of the Blues, is one best album. Miss Freddie has fronted for a bunch of famous bands during her career, and she's been singing the blues for the past 25 years in Pittsburgh. She was recognized on the national music scene with two Blues Foundation Award nominations for her 2017 album, Lady of the Blues, and her bands are nothing but stellar, too. Miss Freddie's Blues Band is known for a mix of high-energy Chicago blues along with Southern soulful blues. And then she has Miss Freddie's Home Cooking Band, which plays a mix of gospel, blues, classic rock, country, and bluegrass. Miss Freddie released a new single this year called Something to Believe in. That was written by Frank Wildhorn and originally recorded by Linda Etter. The song is so appropriate during the troubles and tribulations we've had since 2020. And we do need something to believe in. And I wanted to feature Miss Freddie because she's just got so much talent. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Miss Freddie, for being on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for that introduction. <laughs> You're very welcome. In, and it's well deserved. I just love your style. It's swanky, sexy, classic blues. It's, it's the kind of blues uh, that, that takes us back, probably, what, to the 40s and 50s, you think? Or? Oh, yeah. You know, because growing up, my mom, you know, being from the South, that's 
I mean, she listened to blues and of course coming up here, you know, she listened to blues and we had no choice but to listen to blues. Uh-huh. <laughs> Even though I listened to other stuff growing up, but yeah, um, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, a lot of those songs um, that are off that album, you know, they kind of, they kind of resonate as far as that air and even bringing a little bit fast forward. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Perfect. So you basically grew up with the blues. What a great, I love blues. I, I, I have always loved it. Would you say that it's, it's kind of uh, bread in the bone? I mean, it's just something that you were destined to do. Probably eventually, but but I have to be honest, growing up as a teenager, you know, my mother listened to blues, my dad listened to country, and I'm telling you, I did not like them. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, what kind of music is that, you know? Um, and my mother was, it, my mother was a huge B.B. King fan. I mean, she, B.B. King, hands down, nobody else could do the blues like him. And that that's fine. There's always that idol, you know, you look up to. I grew up listening to the latest Motown, Stax Records, Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel. You know, that's what I listened to growing up. I just kind of wasn't into, you know, into the blues until 25 years ago. So what did you perform before 25 years ago? Um, I started out singing in church at 15 and I did a solo and it was terrible. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> Because I've never had a lesson, never had nothing. I didn't start taking vocal lessons until January of this year. Oh, wow. But, um, but, uh, and the church went silent. I'll never forget. And I was frightened. I said, okay, I'm never doing that again. And so, you know, whatever church I went to, I would, you know, there was only a couple churches after that, that I had joined the choir and I just sang background. I was happy. Um, but as a kid growing up, you know, elementary school, middle school had a couple friends and we would just pretend, you know, we were singing, doing concerts and we were singing in front of like thousands of people. And we'd pick the latest song that we'd sing, you know, out of Motown and wherever else. Um, and I remember my mom bought me a plastic pink microphone for Christmas and I, you know, go around and, you know, start <laughs> singing. So she must have known something back then. <laughs> there you go. Mom's always knew. Well, a beats a hairbrush. How many girls did that? <laughs> singing oh, I did brush. that. I, <laughs> I did that too. I did that. Um, you know, and it's kind of funny and I would take a spatula, you know, <laughs> I would sneak in the kitchen and take a spatula and run around the house singing. So yeah, whatever I could find. <laughs> Well, it's amazing. You you haven't had voice lessons because you've got the voice. I mean, you know how to belt it out and you've got great lung capacity and everything. You just naturally came by that then. Yeah, that's what I've been told. And I have a wonderful vocal coach. And I told her, you know, because she, she for, first time we talked, she's like, well, you know, um, what, what do you what do I what do I need to do for you? Or what do you want me to do? I said, well, and she's a nurse also, like I am. And I said, I need to know the mechanics of singing because I don't. You know, you can go on YouTube, you can buy books, but it's nothing like having someone who has tons, years of experience right. who could show you the ropes. And I'm telling yeah. you, since I started Shelly with her in January, uh-huh. I, I can tell the difference in my singing, my breathing, my singing, holding notes. I can hold a note for a very long time. And when I say a very long time, I'm talking about a minute, Excellent. you know? Um, and so, and I don't feel short of breath. I don't get lightheaded and dizzy, mm. <laughs> you know, yep. when I'm singing. So yeah. Um, and, and, you know, she's helped me with a lot. She taught me a lot of do's and don'ts. And so, you know, that that's my, my keepsake. And I have drilled that in my head. That's awesome. Now, so I take it, is she classically trained or not? Because I know that uh, a lot of the Yes, she are- is. Okay. She is. I think she is classically trained. Yes. Um, she's okay. got a beautiful voice. And so, you know, she teaches a lot of musicians. I And I didn't know, you know, who are rockers, who do country, who do R&B and soul. And I'm, I'm just shocked. So, yes. yes. That is so awesome. And those techniques, you yes, you're, you're right. You can listen to them and you can try to replicate it. But unless you actually maybe walk through the paces with someone who can show you the shortcuts, that makes such a difference. It really does. 
it, it, it really does. And um, I've always wanted to take vocal lessons. I just had to find the time. And so when we had the lockdown, I said, you know, I might as well start somewhere. And I started this year mm-hmm. and we Zoom, you know, it, it was Zoom meeting. And oh, wow. um, okay. And then uh, the first time uh, she came to one of my shows um, about a couple months ago, two, three months ago, and I didn't recognize her. <laughs> and once I recognized her, when I went back for my second set, uh-huh. I said, okay, because, you know, she says, you can growl. She said, I prefer you don't. She said, there's a way that you can sing blues without that, you know, that roughness. And I'm like, oh, okay. I said, some of the songs, you know, that I do. So I, I think I did like maybe three songs <laughs> in the next set. And I saw her face was like, ah, you know, I said, oh my. But um, she is a wealth of knowledge and she knows that I appreciate her. Um, and so I'm working on a current album that I told her I'm going to take the time. I said, cause I'm going to go um, in the studio and start laying down the vocals. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to need your help, like your guidance. Mm-hmm. And um, she, she, she's, I'm telling you, I tell people locally, if you're looking for a vocal coach, Beth Clawson is the one to go to. And that's always good because you, you never really know. I've taken voice lessons myself. And I remember in high school and I wanted to learn other songs and that sort of thing. But at the time I was a coloratura soprano. And of course I was being groomed for more the opera, which is nice, ah. but, and, it, and it's fun to perform, but mm-hmm. I wanted to be able to play or not play, sing other types of genres. And that's a totally different genre. And I remember in my twenties, actually finding a voice coach who had trained with a respiratory therapist. And oh. breath is everything. And I remember, you know, a lot of it's visualization, too. She, she told me that uh, you, you need to uh, think like you're a tree. I said, OK. Oh. <laughs> and and okay. she said, trees are stable in their strength. And you have, you know, the strength with your diaphragm. That's the trunk. But you need right. to be able to sway, you know. <laughs> you can't, right. Because right. otherwise you'll be uprooted, <laughs> you know. And, yeah. And, and it made sense. And it really did make a difference. And I wanted to, you know, sing more the R&B type style. And, and that's a totally different voice placement. That's why I find it amazing. This is something that came naturally to you and you weren't pushing your voice. I mean, it does not sound pushed whatsoever. Yeah, um, she said the same thing. And a lot of the things that a lot of the don'ts that she recommended that I just don't do anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not necessary. I have taken that advice and you know, um, voice rest and me being a nurse, resting your voice is the utmost important thing that you could do when you're done singing. Don't go home singing. You, you know, you had a great show. Don't do it. You know, just maybe talk softly. Oh, that was such a great show. Yes. You know, maybe you could say, yay, it was a great show. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, yeah. get, you know, give yourself time to recuperate, recover and, um, you know, I, I've been doing that because I come home and I'm start, you know, after a show and I'm singing around the house, you know, oh, you're wired. Says, yeah, yeah, yes, totally wired. Well, no, because I, I meditate and now I have increased my meditation. And so if I am dog tired, I will, you know, I will sit somewhere quiet um, and I'll just, you know. I call it fermenting and people laugh at me. They're like, what <laughs> are you like a wine or a beer? I said, nope, I'm like a human being who just, you know, I had a full day and now it's time for me to ferment. It's time to... <laughs> and people laugh at me. I said, yeah, you can ferment. You know, I'm right with you. I am fascinated by jazz singers. I don't know how they do that. And so I had my first taste of doing something jazzy. I went to see a band actually, I knew this guitar player who was trying to get this show, this gig at uh, a local venue, which the venue is no longer around. It was probably about 10, 15 years ago. And he said, why don't you just come on in? I have my guitar, you know, and I'll introduce you. I'm like, oh, sure. Okay. And we picked a, we took Bill Withers song, Ain't No Sunshine. Ooh, nice. Song. And he threw it in a jazz formation. I, you know, I was intimidated yet excited. I started singing. I'm like, 
I could do this. And the owner of the club was like, and when do you all want to start? Is she coming? I'm like, what? I said, I'm just here to help them. get." And I didn't say that to the club owner, but, you know, I said to the guy, I said, you know, I'm just here to help you get the gig. I said, you know, I might have be busy or something. He's like, no, no, you got to come out even if you sing two or three songs. And I did. And so fast forward about um, two years ago, there's a musician, Larry Belli. He's so good on guitar. Oh my gosh, such a skillful. He started out in blues and now he's doing jazz. And we did a couple jazz shows. It was very interesting because Larry knew, you know, he knew me as a singer and what I like and, you know, what key works for me. Because I tell people, I can't tell you what key works for me. You're going to have to play something. I'm just going to have to sing it. We'll just go from there. Mm -hmm. But Larry is very, he's very skillful like that. He's got, a, he's got a perfect ear. And I'm telling you, I loved it. And I see that he's out doing a jet, you know, jazz shows now, a couple jazz shows here and there. So, you know, I, I'm I, hopefully maybe next year because I just, my, my calendar is full. <laughs> I would like to do a couple jazz shows with him. Awesome. you know, maybe in the spring and something in the early fall. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So what is the difference between blues singing and jazz singing? Do you have kind of a synopsis of, of that or? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> I think this, this is my interpretation. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people may agree. 50% may agree. 50% may not, but I have found, I think jazz singing is very, very hard. There's something about that whole syncopation, that whole thing, mm -hmm. um, as far as the timing. I think blues is, it's a little bit more slower. The timing, you can control a little bit better. This is me as a singer, because mm -hmm. I've done the jazz. Um, I think jazz, it's a little bit more. Now, when it comes to the slow songs, not so much. I think jazz and blues kind of you know, they kind of correlate as far as being the same when it comes to doing something slow. But when right. you're doing that upbeat popping thing, I think the timing is totally different. I feel that I have to work extra harder as far as my timing with singing. So I find that's the difference, I think, as far as jazz and blues. Blues, not so much. I just have to get that, you know, that groove going. You know, the one, four, five is great, but I kind of come out of the bot out of the one, four, five, two, and mm -hmm. it's easier. I find it's easier. So that's my whole interpretation on that, on those two. Well, you know, to listen to you, it, it sounds effortless. You would not know that you have any challenges whatsoever. It just, you're just drawn into your music. That's what I love about it. Now, Lady of the Blues, there are a number of cuts off that album. What are the ones that you had the most fun doing? Oh, I can tell you right now. Um, <laughs> Lady of the Blues, of course, mm -hmm. uh, because it's so much fun. But at the same time, it's giving this like deep message. And it's for anyone. It's just not for women. It's for anyone. And but the other one that I had the most fun with was Home Improvement. So the studio band, Kid Anderson, you know, when we were at Greaseland, Kid Anderson, you know, we were going down the list and I said, why don't I do home improvement? I said, you know, let, let me hear what the band came up with, the studio band came up with. And I said, oh, I got something. And then all of a sudden, I just, you know, I, I said, forget what I was thinking about let's just take this out of the box. And I had so much fun because at the end of the song, I, I thought he was going to take what was being said at the end of the song. He's like, oh yeah, you know. And I'm like, he kept that. He's like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> people listen, they're like, what's going on in the studio? I said, well, I just kind of snapped out, I, you know, and, I, and that's in a good way. I said, you know what? The song was written specifically for me by Mike Sweeney here in Pittsburgh. And I said, I'm just going to snap out with the song, you know, and I go like every love of a life I do wear, you know, I'm getting real sassy, real fun with it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that song to answer your question was the most I had fun with. And then Lady of the Blues. <laughs>
And the one that I really, I like doing slow stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so Doorway to the Blues, um, I had fun doing that because I was, you know, I was just sitting back, laying back in a chair and, you know, and just singing it. <laughs> and I said, and they, they, they were looking at me like, I said, well, it's Doorways to the Blues. It's one of those like lazy, lazy songs, I think, you know. That's the doorway to the blues. You know, I, I, so yeah, those three songs I had the most fun with. <laughs> so your posture kind of changed your psyche so that you really could get into the song. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because whenever I go in the studio, I feel so intimidated because as a couple producers throughout my um, music career have said, you know, yes, that's a stroll environment, but kind of imagine you're in front of your audience. I said, I can't because mentally I know there's nobody but us in the, you know, in the studio. And I said, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard because the straw environment, it, it has to be perfection. And, and I'm, you know, it, it was very hard for me to get out of, you know, let's be relaxed, but, but Lady of the Blues album, I, I, I think I relaxed after, cause I, I had like three and a half, almost four days to record. That was it, all those mm -hmm. songs. Wow. And, and it was all day session. When I say all day, we're talking about eight hours. That's a long hours. time. Yeah. It's a very long time. Yeah, it is. Life can get you down, leave you feeling blue. Around crying, that's all you got left to do. You know, baby, that's the doorway to the blue. Day after day, nothing's going right. All we do is argue, argue, fuss, and fight.
you can't hide The truth is right there in front of you Everybody's dreaming Got those nightmares too Get up in the morning Life's going down the tube One thing, baby That's the doorway to the So if you have pickups or something you have to do, then you have to get right back into it. Uh, that's got to be a challenge, too. Yeah, it is a challenge, but it's to the point that I'm used to it uh, mm -hmm. now that, you know, I, I, I call myself a seasoned person that goes in the studio because I've been asked by uh, local bands, you know, to put down some, you know, background vocals. And so um I've learned to kind of relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although something to believe in. I love you, Brian Cole. I told him you can be my taskmaster. You know, just, you know, whip me into shape. Just keep going. Just keep, keep tasking me. But the last take that I did, I said, you know what? Let me just figure this out on my own. And I like that tree analogy because that's exactly what I did. Oh, wow. you know, okay. when you, you mentioned that and uh -huh. I said, you know, let me, let me just, you know, just figure this out. I'm, you know, I, I didn't say I'm this tree, but I said, I'm this person and all of this around the world is going on. And I'm the only one that's, you know, that's steadfast and I've got something to say to people, you know, to give them some kind of hope. So that's, that's, you know, that, that's where that went. And it's definitely something that we need right now. It's been just, I think, some of the craziest time I can ever remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, I like, agree. Like a bad sci-fi movie. It's like, when's it going to end? This really sucks. <laughs> it's like, yes, hello. or one of those B B rated movies. It's like, really? You're going to make yeah. me watch that again? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you know, that that's how I kind of looked at all of this because me being a nurse, you know, there's a lot of challenges. Like I don't do the bedside nursing, I'm an outpatient, but there are still challenges that you have to look at. And I tell people, I have my opinion. <clears throat> I do. And I'm clearing my throat. But no, but seriously, I have my opinion. But when it comes to the outside world, and my goal is to not only be that nurse, but the musician, I'm the nurturer and I have to stay neutral because there are a lot of opinionated people out there about things going, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But here's who I am and this is what I do. And if we're gonna have some kind of a nurse patient relationship or musician fan relationship, Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to you with my knowledge, my know-how, my experience. And I deal with pancreatic rectal and colon cancer patients, outpatient, oh, and I've been a cancer survivor twice. So I oh, know my. that feeling of you got cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how that feels. I know all the ins and outs you have to go through. And music is the same way, you know, somebody starting out new. Oh, I know how that feels. Yes, I know what you're going through, but this is what you need to do and you need to build, you know, build upon yourself. So, yeah. So looking back on the lockdowns that we've been through this past year, that has taught me a lot, a whole lot about myself and people around me, you know, whether it's family, friends, strangers. And I'm very mindful of that. Do you think being a nurse has brought an empathy to your music that you normally wouldn't have because you have to be uh, an empathetic person to be a nurse. Um, nurses are the ones that are hands-on. Doctors make the diagnosis and nurses do the hard work and the leg work. 
Yes. Amen. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> no offense, Doc. Yeah. We love you, but we are the ones that, you know, we're right there on the ground. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think the nursing came before the music. And I've been a nurse for 34 years and I'm still too young to retire, by the way. I said, I must've started when I was like two or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I've always, I actually wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Then I went to be a pediatrician. And then I settled for being a nurse because I didn't want to be in school all those years. Um, so I love, and I think I got that from my mom because my mom was like the neighborhood mom. You know, she's taking care of everybody's cuts and bruises and bleeding. And if you swallowed a, you know, um, if you swallowed a coin somehow, I don't know, you know, I didn't know anything about the Heimlich maneuver, but my mother was helping kids. And so I saw that mm -hmm. and I think I got that from my mom and I've always wanted to go into the health care field. I just wasn't sure. And then I picked nursing. And I love teaching, doing patient family education, and I love teaching the new nurses. So I got to do that as a bedside nurse. And over the years, I developed this concept. If I'm going to share my knowledge of what I have learned as a nurse, I have to have people to trust me. That's the doctors I work for, the staff that I have to work side by side with, my manager. Mm -hmm. And I've done that with every last job that I've had in my career. And so the music came into play 25 years ago. And then my whole, I, I've incorporated that with doing shows in local hospitals, nursing homes, um, senior citizen places. And uh, I find it very, very satisfying because I've always in the last like six, seven years, I wanted to be a music therapist, but it's a full time. You have to go to school full time. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have the time to do that because I'm telling you the first time I did a show was at the VA here, um, the uh, dementia unit, Alzheimer okay. unit. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's just very sad what those people are. But I'm telling you, either they hear it, they feel the vibration. When my band started, it was my blues band, and we started playing, all of a sudden I was watching three or four different veterans, and I'm telling you, such a difference. And, you know, a light bulb kept going off in my head. I said, I think I want to be a music therapist, but I'm like, uh, I said, maybe I'll just keep playing music. And I, and the, 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 the passion was very overwhelming for me. And I said, I got to keep doing this. I got to keep singing. I got it no matter where I'm singing at. And my favorite place to sing is at Children's Hospital, our local Children's Hospital. I love it. Those kids have fun. Oh, sure. They, they actually have. have fun. Oh my gosh. They come up to the microphone, they dance, you know, their parents are like, oh, you know, so and so, you know, we, I said, because they're in a sterile environment, there are rules in the hospital. Oh, yeah. I said, who wants to follow rules? They don't feel good in the first place. They're trying to be brave for you. Yep. Um, I said, so this is their outlet. Let them be wild and free as long as their IVs don't come out because I can't start their IVs. <laughs> 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 but um, but yeah. And so over the years and I used to sing as a as a bedside nurse, whenever I'm worried about a patient or all my patients or if I was in charge and it was going to be a tough night because I worked the night shift, I would sing. I would just go around the hallway singing because that was my way of concentrating and prioritizing what's, you know, what's the most important thing I have to look out for. And um, I have sang to patients. I have sang to patients who were dying. Wow. Um, I have sang to patients who were upset. Um, this one, I'll never forget this one young guy in particular. I don't know what happened, the particulars of it, um, but he had leukemia. <laughs> And, and I don't know what his girlfriend did, mother, I have no idea, but he was swearing up a storm. And I said, oh, and of course they gave him to me. I said, what is wrong with you people? They're like, oh, you can take care of your, I said, really? You know, when they were making all these times, I said, okay. And he was swearing up a storm. So I started singing, I forget what I was singing. And all of a sudden, you know, I was going past this, walking past his room, singing, 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 singing. And then finally it's like, who is that out there singing? And I go in the room and I said, it was me. He's like, really? You're a singer? I said, yeah. 
I said, on the side, I'm a musician. He's like, guitar. So I said, you're going to be here for a minute. Why don't you have somebody bring a guitar? He's like, nah, I don't feel like I said, but you're in a private room. Have somebody bring your guitar. So um, I think it was a day or two later, somebody brought an acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what do you know? I said, well, what do you know? He started naming. I said, I don't know none of those people. I said, so let's start from the bottom. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, you know, and, and we finally found something. I forget what it was, but we finally found something and his whole attitude changed. And I was so happy. And right at his discharge, I happened, he was being discharged early, like a few days later. And he said, where's that lady at that sings? And they're like, Freddie's like, yeah. And they came and got me. I think I was with an, uh, another patient because he wasn't my patient that day of discharge. And he said, I just want to thank you. I said, for what? He said, for singing with me. He said, I'm not that great guitar player. I said, yeah, actually you are. <laughs> I said, you knew what key I should be singing certain things. And, and he hugged me. And um, when we pulled away, he, he was crying. Wow. And I said, all right, Lord, this is what I'm supposed to do. Searching for answers. Everybody's trying to find some meaning in their life. Where do we belong? Who will be our shelter? Looking for salvation, a haven in the storm. Something to believe in in a you. I was like a wave of shit, drifting out to nowhere, tossing in the raging water, trying to find my way home. You must be an angel.
And you're really active with nonprofits too. People call me to do charity work for, you know, um, as far as singing. Mm -hmm. And so every year, actually now, actually I'm doing, um, I did it two years ago. Uh, there's one benefit that I'm doing that's coming up in a couple of weeks. It's for the Brain Tumor Foundation. And the one that I religiously do every year, except for last year because of the pandemic, the lockdown is uh, Pink Day. It's to raise money for the Breast Cancer um, Foundation. Right. And, and that that's every year. And so the lady that I think this is like eight years now, because, you know, I was wondering because they had a, a pre-benefit a couple of weeks ago. And my blues band played. And I said, how many years has it been now? She's like, I think she said eight. And I said, wow, since it started. Um, and I've done Toys for Tots. I've done Relays for Life through the American Cancer Society. Oh my gosh, Shelly, the list goes on. That's I've done fantastic. shows for, you know, whenever they do something for the homeless vets here in Pittsburgh and West mm -hmm. Virginia. So, you know, and people, I tell people, you have to get a hold of me now for next year. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, my schedule is, you know, it's insane. It used to be mm -hmm. overwhelming, but it's no longer overwhelming because the lockdown has taught me a lot. I'm like, okay, I'll look at my schedule. If I'm available, I'll do it. If not, I've learned to say no. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't say no to August 22nd, people. I'm singing for a church. Um, they're having a fellowship, you know, uh, I think it's friends and family fellowship. So a friend of mine said, do you mind coming to our church and doing a couple of songs? I'm like, okay. Then I'm going to the Brain Tumor Foundation Benefit singing with a band. And then my band is doing a guitar barbecue um, at five o'clock today. So that's three shows I'm doing. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that's what I said. That, that's not busy at all, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. I wanted to mention some more songs here that I was really impressed with. I really liked Use the Back Door. Um, oh, man. That's a great song. It's a swanky blues tune about a man leaving, and I love it. I don't want to use the back door. I don't want my friends to see you leave. It's a nice angle on Don't Let the Door Hit You on You Know Where, right? <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, my... um. I think it's my bass player or my drummer in the electric band because we do that. Um, I think one of them really like it. And I noticed my drummer, he does something crazy on it. Um, <laughs> after the guitar player is done with his solo. Um, and a lot of people like it because it's one of those swanky, sassy, one, four, five things that you can, you can play around with as a vocalist. So, yeah. <laughs>
you want the truth, baby, I'm not into this game. It seems I've been given much more mm, than I received. What is the song, um, Miss Freddie's Gonna Fix Ya? I hear a lot of the chain, chain of fools in that, mm-hmm. kind of that style. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was written by Mike Sweeney. That's one of my most requested songs. <laughs> so I tell people, I said, you know, I, 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 I dedicate that to the healthcare workers and to caregivers, period. I said, you know, you worked all day, you know, you come home tired, you're aching, you need a nurse to take your aches away. I said, here's Miss Freddie. She's a nurse. I got your back. You come home tired, been working all day. You need a nurse to take those aches away. Miss Fred is gonna fix ya Leave your troubles behind Let me ease your mind Miss Fred is gonna fix ya I'll fix you up fine I'll take you in Look after you You'll be a new man before I'm through Miss Fred is gonna fix ya I said I would, baby Miss Fred is gonna fix ya would find your music and find out where they can hear you live. Uh, this is so very exciting. Oh, thank you. Well, you can go to my website, MissFreddy.com, M-I-S-S-F-R-E-D-D-Y-E.com and find out where I'm going to be playing at. And then if you want to take a listen to my music, add me to your playlist. Um, you can go to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, iHeartRadio, uh, CD Baby, YouTube. 
-hmm. You can find all the stuff on YouTube, my two albums and my two singles, and then some in between on YouTube. This has been wonderful. And I know that our listeners will adore your music. Uh, if if they aren't uh, fans before, they are now guaranteed. Uh, I love your Aww. sound. Oh, thank you so much. And and I really appreciate, you know, you inviting me on. And, you know, everybody out there, thank you so much for your support. Um, if you don't know who I am, you will now. Yep. I'm the lady that sings the blues that used to have a possum as a pet. So. Oh, wow. We didn't get into the possum story. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. I did as a kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. She lasted for two years. She was my baby, you Aww. know, so. Thank you so much, Miss Freddie, the lady of the blues here on TNC Radio Live. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for listening to another great interview on TNC Radio Live and the Truckers Network Radio Show. All of the material you hear on TNC Radio Live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of TNC Radio Live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live.